Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, dearly loved by God. It's too much. The world has gone crazy and it's too much for us to bear. We carry too much weight on our shoulders. There is too much suffering. Too many people are dying from this illness. We are feeling too insecure. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We have too many bills and not enough to pay it. We are too afraid. Afraid of what might happen. Afraid of what the future will hold. Afraid of the sickness. Afraid of where that virus may lurk. Afraid of death. And on top of all of these burdens which weigh on all of our hearts, as we think about all of that trouble that is coming our way, there's our own personal burdens, ones that only we are bearing. And in the solitude, the loneliness of our homes, it feels, it feels so much worse, like there is no help, no hope. It's too much to bear. It wasn't too much for one man. People looked at him and they wondered how one man could endure so much. It had been this way all his life. From the time he was a baby, he had been pursued and persecuted. Throughout his adult life, he had wandered around. He knew what it was like to feel hungry and to thirst. He wept tears of sorrow. He suffered with so many. He faced down every disease. He endured any hardship. But now, now this had to be too much. They arrested him. They told lies about him. They beat him and spit on him and mocked him. They claimed that he had blasphemed against God. They handed him over to the Romans. They twisted a crown of thorns and placed it on his head. They beat him with a scepter. They laughed at him. After they had flogged him and his flesh was open and raw, they placed a cross upon his shoulders and marched him out of the city. And there they crucified him. He hung on that cross alone for hours, suffering in pain as his breath came harder and harder. And even worse than that was the burden that people could not see. The burden of God's anger. The burdens of God's wrath. The fires of hell licked at his feet. But it was not too much. And at last, when he had endured everything, when he had endured the worst that humanity could offer, all of its brutality, all of its hatred, all of its cruelty, all of its suffering and pain, when he had endured all that God could give, all the wrath, all the anger, all the fury over sin, he simply said, it is finished, and he hung his head and gave up his spirit. It was not too much. It wasn't too much. Not because the pain wasn't real. Not because it wasn't terrible. Not because he was facing something that anyone else could endure. It was not too much because he had a reason why he would suffer all those things. 700 years before he walked the earth, the prophet Isaiah wrote about Jesus, and this is what he said. Surely he was taking up our weaknesses. He was carrying our sufferings. 
We thought it was because of God that he was stricken, smitten, and afflicted. But it was because of our rebellion that he was pierced. He was crushed for the guilt our sins deserved. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each one of us has turned his own way. But the Lord has charged all our guilt to him. In these dark times, we ask why. We ask how long. We ask, where is God? We wonder, does he care for us? Does he love us? Are we being punished? When will it all end? Now, there will be those who try to tell you they know why this is happening. And though I can say that this is a result of living in a sinful and broken world, those who say they know why are lying in the name of God. God's people have always asked, How long, O Lord? And in times of war, in times of plague, that answer, it is hidden. It is hidden in the eternal knowledge of God and the mystery of his will. But we do know he cares. We do know where he is. We do know that he longs to listen to our prayers. We do know that he has provided the answer and the solution, not only to the suffering of this present moment, but to all suffering, to all pain, to all fear, to all death. He provides that answer in his own blood. Jesus died for your sins. He carried all of your suffering, your pain, your weakness, your loneliness, and it was not too much for him. He did this so that you could have peace. He did this so that you could be healed, not just from one disease, but from them all, not just for a time, but for all time. God laid your guilt on Jesus so that he could proclaim you innocent and set you free and bring you to life everlasting. It is too much. No one can bear the suffering that is going on right now. But it's not too much for God. It's not too much for our Savior Jesus. And so bring your burdens to him. Bring him your sadness. Bring him your suffering. Bring him your loneliness. Bring him your fear. Bring him your sins. Bring him your despair. Bring him your death. It isn't too much for him. He carries it all. He carries it all so that you can have life forever. And so, I don't know how long it's going to be before our doors open again and we can all gather together and enjoy the comfort of our Savior. But we, a beautiful Savior, will continue to proclaim this wonderful message that Jesus has carried your burdens. We will continue to find our hope and our comfort in these times of suffering, in the knowledge that God is not angry, he is not punishing us, but he has forgiven us for the sake of his Son. We will continue to sing the songs that remind us of this work. We will continue to pray. We will continue to rejoice because our God is with us and our God has assured us of all of his promises and nothing can take that away. If you are feeling sad and lonely, we invite you to join us online for all of our services. If you need someone to talk to, please give me a call or call a friend. If you have any questions about what Jesus has done, send an email, a message, 
we are always open to talk and listen. Jesus has carried all of our burdens, and he has given us each other to help and encourage us through all of these difficult times. And so we invite you to our friend. God loves you. He has died for you. He has risen for you. He has given you hope. Amen.